Hey guys, John here from Sonic Drive Studio. I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel. Today we're checking out the EN Hardball Metalhead Amplifier plugin by Nembrini Audio. And of course, the Hardball is based on one of my favorite amplifiers in real life, the Angle Powerball 2. So this should be fun and interesting indeed. This video is sponsored by Nembrini Audio, by the way, but as always, all thoughts and opinions are 100% my own. Now, before we take a good look at what this plugin can do, let's take a listen to a demo track that I created with my brand new ESP LTD Phoenix Deluxe 1000 with the quilted maple top. It's a lovely guitar with two Seymour Duncan pickups, the SH5 Custom in the bridge and the Fat Cat P90 pickup in the neck. Let's check it out. That sounded pretty awesome. So, what does this plugin have to offer? Well, it's based on a very versatile amp, so it can do a lot. It has four channels, a clean channel, a crunch channel, and two lead channels. So the lead three and the lead four channel. So two high gain channels, basically, each with their own unique voicing. And the channels of this amplifier plugin blend together quite nicely. And the plugin, just as the real amplifier, has a bunch of voicing switches, which we'll get to in a second. And then we have a cabinet section with six different cabinets to choose from, a bunch of 4x12s and 2x12s as well, and four different mic options for each cabinet. And of course, you can blend them together and stuff like that, and there's an ambient mic. Anyway, let's take a quick look at listen at the cab block, just so you guys can hear the sound differences between the cabinets and how all the controls affect the sound. Check it out.
Pretty cool, right? In the top right of the screen, we also have a very effective noise gate and the filters section, which basically has a low and a high cut and also a pre-filter before the amplifier that cuts out the low end, which basically makes it sound more tight and focused, which is great for low tuned guitars or extended range instruments like an eight string or something. Let's take a quick look and listen at the filter section. <laughs> Of course, you can also load your own impulse responses or bypass the cabinet section completely. Browsing through IRs in the impulse section is a breeze, by the way, so it's very easy to use. So as you can see, this entire plugin is pretty straightforward. It can do a lot, but it's still easy to use, which is great. Now let's take a closer look at the tones that I created for the demo track and look at the processing that I did and all the tweaking. Now the track consisted of four sections and each section basically uses a different channel. And I'm using this plugin as I would in a real mix. So there is some automation and some processing going on as well to make the guitars fit the mix basically. Now for the first section, the clean section, for the guitar I used the neck pickup, which is the Fat Cat by Seymour Duncan, and that's a kind of P90 style pickup. Let's go ahead and take a quick listen to the isolated guitars of that section. Great, so that's the clean channel, of course, double tracked and then panned hard left and right, which is basically what I almost always do for my guitar tracks. Now in the cabinet section, I am using one of the stock cabinets for this part, the MB Rex 4x12 V30 cab to be precise, which is based on the Mesa Boogie 4x12, of course. And I'm using the Ribbon 121 and Dynamic 57 mic blended together. And I also blended in some of the ambient mic. And since we're in the virtual world, you can add as much processing to this as you like. And I added some reverb with Helix Native on both guitars just to make them sound a little bit more roomy and ambient. And for the second section, I'm also enabling a delay block with a rhythmic delay, which I'm automating in for that specific section. I also want to show you guys how the bright bottom and mid boost voicing switches sound on this channel and how they affect the tone. Take a quick look at that. Great, so those are some nice tone shaping options indeed, just as with the real amplifier. Now let's move on to the second section with the crunch channel. And for this section and all the other sections forward, I'm using the bridge pickup, which is the SH5 Custom by Seymour Duncan. Okay, let's take a quick listen to the isolated guitars. <laughs> So that's the crunch section with the crunch channel, of course. 
Now in the cabinet section, I'm using very similar settings as before. So again, the MB Rect cabinet with the same mics and also using the filter section to shape the tone a little bit, cutting out some lows, cutting out some highs. And for this section, again, I'm doing some automation on the guitars. And that's for the right section when the sort of lead part kicks in with the higher notes. Now for that section, I'm enabling the mid boost via automation. And the mid boost is really helping the guitar to cut through basically. And then because this is a lead guitar, I also wanted to add some delay again with Helix Native, which is also being automated in. Pretty neat, right? And now let's also take a listen to the voicing switches for that channel, just so you guys can hear how they affect the crunch channel. Check it out. Okay, and now for the heavier stuff, we're moving on to the third section with the lead three channel for some nice high gain, heavy rock tones. Again, with the SH5 custom bridge pickup. Let's take a listen. Now both the lead three and lead four high gain channels have these bottom switches. I did not use them for these sections, but they do make the sound a little bit more fat in the bottom end, which we'll listen to in a second. And for the cap section, this time I used an impulse response in the impulses block just to see how that sounds. And I used the high gain mix from the Ownhammer low tuned essentials pack, which turned out to be a great sounding combo with this plugin for nice aggressive and in your face tones. And the filters and the filters block are also enabled for some gentle shaping, but I'm also doing some processing on the group bus. So I'm sending these tracks to one group bus. I'm basically cutting out some more low end with the Slate SSL EQ in the filter section at around 81 Hertz or so, or 80 Hertz. And then I'm also dipping out some honky mid range at about 400 or 500 Hertz or something, just to let the guitars breathe a little bit more in the mix. Let's take a quick listen to the processing. And now let's also take a quick listen to how the voicing switches affect this channel. For the fourth section, I'm using the lead four channel, which is of course also a high gain channel. It's a bit more tight and ferocious sounding, by the way. Again, on the bridge pickup, let's take a quick listen. So the settings for this tone are quite similar aside from the channel change. So I'm using the same impulse response block and I think the same filter settings as well. And again, for the processing, I'm doing similar things. 
So a low cut in the slate EQ, and then also a dip in the mid-range. Again, for removing some mid-range boxiness or honkiness. So definitely nothing major. Let's take a quick listen at the processing. Cool. There's also a group bus to which I'm routing all the guitars. So this affects all the guitars in the song basically. And it has some simple processing going on. We've got the virtual tape machines going on by Slate Digital as well as VCC, the virtual console collection. And this is subtle, but it gives the tracks a little bit of analog warmth and glues them together a little bit. And then I'm using the FabFilter Pro Q3 plugin for some dynamic EQ. And that's basically dipping out the low end thumpy notes when I'm doing the palm muted notes, those resonant low end notes. And then also the FG Grey bus compressor for some very subtle compression on the entire guitar track. And this glues the guitars together just a little bit. Now let's take a listen to how the processing of this bus track affects the guitar tones. <laughs> That was the Nembrini Audio EN Hardball plugin. Pretty sweet, right? I know that I had a lot of fun with this plugin. Now, to get the tones super mix ready and polished, you might need to use some subtle processing as I did. There are some great tones to be had with this plugin, and you can definitely have a lot of fun with it too. For more information about this plugin, visit nembriniaudio.com. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like and subscribe, and also let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on this plugin. That would all be hugely appreciated. And you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you guys so much and hope to see you soon. Cheers.